it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce to you uh, Morgan. Morgan is uh, somebody who is, uh, received her certification as a nutritional health coach from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition in 2011. And it's uh, certified with the American Association of Drugless Practitioner. 10 years into uh, a career in health and wellness has led Morgan to a place of gratitude and humility. Her role as a certified holistic health coach has morphed over the years, incorporating many different elements of health and wellness. Morgan has experience working with individuals, both one-on-one -on -one and in the group setting. She has also worked as a raw vegan chef where she created the, uh, and sold her product and also cooked and delivered nutrient-dense meals for busy family. Morgan sees herself as an educator, paving the path for the others to discover their own healing journey. Natural Grosser is just a place for her to expand her role in educating the community. And when Morgan is not in the Natural Grosser providing nutritional education, she can be found enjoying the nature, hot springs, and home cooked meals. And um, I will let uh, turn the uh, microphone to uh, to Morgan, and I want her to actually just give us a little bit of the background of who Natural Grocer is, what is that organization all about, and then we will go into presentation. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that lovely introduction, Irema. I really appreciate it. Yes, and thank you for everybody being here today. Um, let me take my glasses off for a moment so you can see my eyes. So then I'll put these back on to help with some of the computer glare and such. Um, but uh, I will talk a little bit about myself and natural grocers, and then yes, we will go into, into our class today. Um, it's been a while since I've taken a look at my own uh, bio there, and it does make me smile to hear about my love of hot springs. Um, I do love hot springs. And that's uh, another wonderful outdoor activity where we're enjoying the sun, Light is good, but we also still need to protect our skin. So hopefully we can get some good information today on how to do that, how to protect our skin from the inside out when sunscreen might just not be enough. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about natural grocers and the natural grocers difference. And depending on who you are out there, if you're a professional, if you're just entering the world of nutrition, if you just have a passion for nutrition and you want to eat better and feel better and live a more optimal life, um, then welcome. And I hope that natural grocers has something for you as well. But before we jump into all of that, I just need to share a friendly reminder that our classes are not intended to diagnose, treat, or mitigate disease. And it's always important to remember that dietary supplements and even foods can interact with prescription medications. So if you do take a prescription medication, we always ask that you become your best advocate and become informed about those possible interactions. And now that we have all of that housekeeping out of the way, we can talk about some of the unique natural grocers differences. Um, so whether you've heard of natural grocers, been into a natural grocers, would like to check out a natural grocers, there's 166 of them out there and growing in 21 states. Um, so we are not um, I think it's east of the Mississippi, but we're not in those eastern states. So if you're Midwest and West, you can generally find a natural grocers out there. Um, so for those who are interested in, you know, learning more about nutrition education, the one of the founding principles of natural grocers and what got Margaret, the founder of Natural Grocers, really excited about her company was being able to provide free nutrition education to the community. And her and her husband started this company with $200 in their pocket, going door to door, offering free nutrition information, some baked bread, 
and a handful of supplements. And today, that pillar, that foundational pillar is still a stronghold. And that's why I'm here today as well as a nutritional health coach. Um, it provides me with an ongoing education in the field of nutrition education, which we know is a, still an emerging field and it's always changing. So I get to stay up to date with the latest and greatest science. And we know that the internet out there can be a sea of confusing information and claims. So Natural Grocers makes a dedicated effort to provide not only free, but also science-based nutrition education for the community. Um, now I'm a little biased, but that's probably my favorite natural grocers difference. And if you yourself are a nutritional professional out there and you're looking to start your career and you're not sure if you're going to be an entrepreneur or if you'd like some support getting your foot into the door, natural grocers could be a good place for you and be happy to share more information about that individually. If anybody ever needs that information, um, there's plenty of resources out there. And besides the free nutrition education, which comes in the forms of classes, both in store, these wonderful virtual presentations, one-on-one -on -one health coaching sessions. Natural Grocers is also committed to quality. And I have to say, even though number one, the nutrition education is a favorite of mine, the commitment to quality is huge. And this is because again, there's so much there's just so much confusing, misleading information out there. So I really feel good as not only an employee, but a consumer when I walk through those doors and I know that all the products go through a screening and approval process to ensure that they meet those standards. You'll never find any artificial sweeteners, no irradiated foods, and only naturally raised quality um, meat and dairy as well. Then lastly, you're also going to find USDA organic produce only at Natural Grocers. Um, besides this, they really make a commitment to supporting brands that offer a commitment to regenerative agriculture as well and try and partner with those brands as many ways as they can. And what's even cooler than all of that is as a consumer, as somebody who wants to really know where their food's coming from, you have access to all of this information and more at Natural Grocers through things called called customer literature files. So we have a list of over 200 ingredients that we don't allow through the doors of natural grocers and onto those shelves. And so all of those lists of ingredients, they, there's a lot of them and some of them are confusing and long words that we can't pronounce very well. So it's a really useful tool when we're trying to navigate what's considered safe and not in our products. Um, this kind of rolls right into the, uh, the commitment that Natural Grocers makes to everyday affordable pricing. Um, basically, Natural Grocers makes an effort, a concerted effort to pass their savings on to their customers because they do believe that nutrition, good nutrition should be affordable to everybody. And then that commitment to the community that comes right back to those free nutrition classes, free coaching sessions, bagless checkouts, um, and the commitment to the community goes beyond that with donations to local food banks and also other organizations that are dedicated to human welfare. And it is um, April, so we have Earth Day coming up and it's Earth Month at Natural Grocers when you're going to find a lot of different opportunities at Natural Grocers during April to see Natural Grocers giving back to the community um, big in a big and small ways. And lastly, you can't do it without employees and Natural Grocers is really committed to their employees, supporting the health and well-being of their employees through lots of different programs, um, plenty of work-life balance, and my favorite, a wellness corner where we can get supplements and different things on a daily basis while at work to support our health. So if you are, again, a customer, somebody who's interested in Natural Grocers for the first time, never heard of Natural Grocers, or maybe Maybe you are thinking about starting a career at Natural Grocers yourself. These five founding principles and more are what set Natural Grocers apart from so many different supermarkets and even natural food stores.
And that is why I am here today. <laughs> Um, and Irene did mention that I uh, attended the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, which is true. And that was a long time ago back in New York City, which is uh, where I'm from. And when I left New York and I moved to Colorado, I was wondering where the heck am I going to find all of my wonderful supplements and cool items? I was raw vegan at the time. And, and I really wonder, you know, huh. Where is that going to be? And lo and behold, I discovered natural grocers. <laughs> so I was a customer for quite some time before um, coming onto the other side of the fence. But I have to say I've been truly, truly blessed in this position to see the impacts that we're able to have on the community and to also be able to receive that free science-based information, nutrition information myself on a continual basis. Um, Without further ado, that brings us to the good stuff, <laughs> our class for today. And as I went through all of that, I forgot to actually change our slides here, guys. So pardon me, forgive me. I'm used to standing up and giving classes live. So it's a little bit of a different scenario for me to be sitting here virtually. All right. So our natural grocers difference right here, we've got that nutrition education, commitment to quality, commitment to our employees, commitment to the community, and of course, the everyday affordable pricing. Which brings us to today's class overview. So I mentioned that we're gonna split this class into two parts. So that means today we're gonna to focus on the aging of the skin, as well as aging and sun damage. Then we're going to get into the inside out protection. And in order to do that, we have to talk about some nutrients. The nutrients that we're going to focus on today are going to include a plethora of free radical scavengers or antioxidants and their support of skin health. That's going to include some carotenoids. We're going to talk about blue light and its effects on skin health. We're going to talk about some protective polyphenols and how they support skin health. We will get into vitamin C supplements and creams, vitamin E and its role in skin health. And lastly, we will talk about omega-3s and their role in skin health today. Now, what are we going to do with all of that information? Next time, we're going to tie all of the different nutrients that we talk about today into dietary support of skin health. And that's when we're really going to take a look at different diets and how we can support our skin from the inside out through nutrition, so through the foods that we eat and through the supplements that we take, as well as some lifestyle choices that we make. It's hard to get used to this little clicker on here. <laughs> so first up, guys, the aging of the skin. So I have a confession to make. I've caught it. That's right. I've got it. <laughs> aging. I'm getting older. Are you? Are you? Are any of you guys? Any of you guys out there, the 24 participants? Have you caught aging as well? Guys, it's inevitable that our skin's going to age, right? However, we're not all going to age at the same rate. And there's a couple of different ways this can happen. Essentially, there's two paths. There's the intrinsic path of aging, which is going to be more natural and graceful and might result in some fine lines and wrinkles. And there's the more unnatural and accelerated skin aging, which is going to result from damage from things like the sun, unfortunately. And guys, the prevention of skin unnatural aging and supporting skin health is very, very important, which is why you're here today, right? In fact, it's so important that there's a huge industry around it, and it's full of confusing claims and products that have kind of limited evidence. In fact, in 2020, the beauty and personal care world um, globally realized $472 billion worldwide. That's a lot of money. And in the USA alone, it's estimated that this industry will realize $91.4 billion in 2023, so this year. 
And guess what? This industry is not slowing down. In fact, it's growing 2.6% annually. This anti-aging industry has a lot of combative words associated with it. We treat anti-aging and aging like a culture of warfare, don't we? We want to fight aging. We want to combat aging. We want to find the fountain of youth, if you will. So today I'm going to help educate ourselves, each other, myself included, on what we can look for and help teach ourselves about how to take care of our skin from the inside out with diet and supplements so that our skin can age as naturally and as gracefully as possible. So we have to ask ourselves, what are some of the characteristics of unnatural or accelerated skin aging. Unfortunately, I see my little picture didn't show up here, but there's a picture of a woman sitting on a beach with some really um, um, crispy, let's say, looking skin, <laughs> some sagging skin, lots of wrinkles. So when we think about unnatural or accelerated aging skin, I don't think it's too hard to realize that we're talking about things like rough wrinkles and sagging or leathery skin and sunspots. However, these changes, they can be slowed down and made less severe when we protect our skin from the inside out through diet and supplements. And guess what? There are certain nutrients that have been shown in scientific studies to help our skin age gracefully. So I have to ask you guys, and you can kind of, you know, answer for yourself here. What do you think causes unnatural aging of the skin? Is it elevated blood sugar, cigarette smoke, excessive alcohol intake? Maybe it's those ultraviolet rays in the sunlight. Or could it be E, all of the above? Well, if you've guessed E, all of the above, you are correct. <laughs> there are a lot of causes that go into accelerated skin aging, and there are more than just the ones we've listed. So things like trauma and hormonal imbalance, psychological stress, and even pollution can all affect the aging of the skin. So sunshine, here we are. We got to talk about it. The good, the bad, and the skin damage. One of the leading causes of unnatural or accelerated skin aging is sun damage. And it's unfortunate, right? Because we're hardwired to enjoy the sunshine. Sunshine stimulates the ever important production of vitamin D and feel good chemical endorphins. Uh, runner's high reference anyone, right? It also helps regulate our circadian rhythm by influencing the production of melatonin. So we have to just enjoy sunshine responsibly and be able to protect ourselves from the harmful effects of sunshine. What are those harmful effects of sunshine? In order to know, we have to understand the light spectrum a little bit. Skin is damaged by the sun mostly because of the high energy ultraviolet rays in sunlight. And you can see that portion highlighted in red right here, the UV rays. Of course, next to that is our visible light. You may even see blue light on there, and we'll get to that one. Don't worry. But ultraviolet comes in three varieties, UVC rays, which could be very damaging, but luckily don't get to the Earth's surface much, UVB rays, which are actually the cause of major suns, sunburns, therefore sunscreens were invented to block those UVB rays. UVB rays are actually also what stimulate our body to produce vitamin D. And guess what? You've probably already guessed it. Unfortunately, when we use sunscreen, we do block this from happening. UVB rays only account for 5% of the UV rays that reach the earth, guys. And in the northern hemisphere, they're mostly present during the uh, summer months and like between the times of day of like 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. But UVA rays these are the ones we have to be mindful of because they're 95% of the UV rays reaching Earth. And guess what? They don't really cause sunburn and can actually penetrate deeper into our skin. 
So even though UVB rays only account for 5% of the rays that reach the Earth's surface, because they're the ones that cause the sunburn, the cosmetic and dermatology industry really focused on protecting us from these rays. But UVA rays, they don't cause a sunburn. In fact, it takes like a thousand times more UVA to burn the skin than UVB. But because of this, it's somewhat less studied and protection from UVA was kind of ignored. And even worse, as we've begun to learn more about UVA rays, it turns out that these guys are present throughout the whole day and don't have the seasonal changes or changes associated with clouds and pollution as we see with UVB. So by ignoring UVA, we kind of may have missed like a big piece of the puzzle when it comes to skin protection. But let's take a closer look at the structure of the skin real quick, and that way we can understand how these rays damage it. So this is a very simple diagram of the skin, but I love it. It's very useful for explaining how UV rays affect the skin. The skin has three layers, as we can see here. The epidermis, which is that top layer of the skin, this is going to contain the layer of the skin with a lot of cells that turn over quite fast. So there's a lot of turnover and replication in this um, layer. Below that, we've got the dermis and the hypodermis, both below the epidermis. And the dermis is going to contain like long-lived proteins that give skin structure and the blood vessels as well, you see in red there, which are going to supply the skin with nutrients for skin health. Um, you'll see too, I'm going to mention a nutrient in a little while that also um, supports the structure of the skin health in terms of that cell, um, the cell integrity. So let's take a look at that structure a little bit more closely. As we study the structure of the skin, we learn that that epidermis, that layer with um, mostly cells, these are melanocytes that help give us our natural skin color and the suntan as well. Um, and then we can find that a little bit deeper in the epidermis. But then the dermis, on the other hand, this is going to contain proteins that provide a lot of the strength and elasticity to the skin. Also contains our sweat glands and oil producing glands. Now, most of us probably have heard of collagen and we're familiar with collagen and collagen helps provide the skin with strength. But maybe we haven't heard of elastin as much. And this is a different kind of protein that actually helps um, provide an elastic quality to the skin and gives that skin more of its snap back quality. And there are some different nutrients and foods that we can eat to support both our collagen and elastin production. Uh, unfortunately, these guys do decrease in production with age and of course, if the skin is damaged. Uh, when the collagen or elastin is damaged or we don't produce enough of it, that's when we start to see the formation of skin wrinkles. We also see the production of sweat um, and oils falling below optimal levels as we age as well. And production of oils can drop as 65% actually in unnatural aging. Um, I myself have been very interested in supporting the skin through diet because the reason I got into health coaching was because I struggled with really severe chronic acne. Um, so the skin was, you know, my area of focus for a really long time. And um, I have really oily skin. I've always had really oily skin. Um, it's kind of part of why I live in the West and not in the East anymore, because the humidity doesn't help help me. I actually produce way too much oil. Um, so I don't know, I might be one of those cases where I'm still going to produce oil in a, in a dry environment. But, you know, it, it, it speaks to how um, different each one of us is as well. And sometimes even just shifting your environment can make a difference in what you're trying to achieve with your skin. But I digress. Personal story but it gives you a little picture into how I got into, into this. <laughs> so what is actually going on when those, oops, I'm sorry, guys. 
yeah, we're okay here. Um, what is actually going on when those UV rays hit our skin? Well, as we discussed, we expose our skin to sunlight. We're potentially exposing our skin to both those UVA and UVB rays. Now, the UV B rays may be affected by pollution, um, latitude, the uh, sun clouds that day, if you put sunscreen on, but we know those UVA rays, um, that stuff doesn't really make as much of a difference and they're present all year long. UVB rays, they penetrate the epidermis and they account for about 40% of associated skin damage. And UVB rays do directly damage DNA and can cause cells to mutate as well. And those UVA rays, they can penetrate a lot deeper and they can hit the dermis, in fact, and affect the structure of the skin cells. And they account for like 60% of sun-induced skin damage. In fact, they've been described as the aging ray. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard that. So what happens when these UV rays are actually hitting our skin? Getting the hang of my clicker now. <laughs> UV rays, when they hit our skin, they create free radical damage. I don't know if you've ever heard of free radicals before, but I'm looking out at the audience. Who knows about free radicals? When UV rays hit the proteins and other cell structures in our skin, they create free radicals. Free radicals are basically um, unstable molecules that have one less electron than needed to be friendly and not damaging to our cells, long story short. So free radicals need to be neutralized by giving an electron in, so that they're no longer damaging to our body. But first, let's take a look at what happens when we're creating free radicals as UV rays hit our skin. So these free radicals, they can damage DNA and they can do things like suppress immune function. And free radicals that are created by UVA ray damage things like proteins in the dermis, like collagen and elastin. So they can affect the, the way that cells begin to lay down on the skin as well. Um, in response to damage from free radicals, cells in the skin also will begin to produce inflammatory compounds. So yes, we can see that this all leads to the dreaded inflammation. When we have free radical damage, we almost always can expect inflammation if we're not quenching those free radicals. So in this case, free radicals, they act as danger signals, basically, to our immune cells that reside in the skin. And the immune cells and other cells, they begin producing inflammatory signals. And this creates an inflammatory state in the skin. And this is why your skin might become red or warm, even if you don't get a sunburn. In fact, if anyone's ever had sun poisoning, um, you may have had a sun poisoning, but not a sunburn. That's actually a result of excessive free radicals and inflammation production. So inflammation in the skin directly causes a suppression of our immune function. And when the immune function is suppressed, mutant cells that are not killed by our immune system can lead to the expansion of those mutant cells and eventually things like tumor formation. And also when inflammatory molecules are made, they cause the production of other proteins that digest and destroy collagen, which can damage the structure of the skin further. And when this damage accumulates over time, it's the healthy structure of the skin that begins to change and then leads to those heavier wrinkles and the unnatural aging. So we'll just do a quick little side-by-side -side here and compare, since we just looked at the layers of the skin and the different ultraviolet rays that can penetrate, let's take a look at the consequences of these two rays. So as we mentioned, UVA rays have been dubbed the aging ray, and it's thought because of their deep penetration, they're responsible for the sun's aging effects, while UVB rays are mostly responsible for sunburns due to the fact that they only reach that top layer of the skin. And a major shortcoming of SPF ratings is that they're only useful in measuring UVB protection. 
While UVA blocking ability of sunscreens is not usually rated beyond the indication of broad spectrum. UVB is the ray that's responsible for stimulating vitamin D synthesis, while the redeeming aspects of UVA are kind of limited. Damage from either of these rays can result in cellular mutations, which can lead to problems later in life. And of course, those UVA rays, they're present all year round, and they're not affected by things like pollution and clouds. So most people over the age of 65 have at least one sign of skin damage. That's not surprising, right? <laughs> um, well, this could be like sagging of the skin or loss of pigmentation or sunspots, skin cancer, eczema. But most of us actually have more than one sign and 90% of these changes are related to sun exposure and poor diet. So natural aging isn't apparent in the skin until the mid 50s or 60s. However, signs of unnatural aging can be detected as early as the teenage years. And natural aging results in fine wrinkles and a slow loss in skin pigmentation. Of course, we've talked about some of the unnatural aging, which is associated with major changes in the thickness of the epidermis and the dermis. And that can lead to things like a reduced sensory perception or increased water loss through the skin. So not being able to hold that hydration as well, or even a decreased response to injury, a reduced ability for the skin to repair itself after being damaged. Um, it can even increase the incidence of some skin diseases as well. So unnatural aging is also associated with irregular changes in skin pigmentation. And this is what's known as those sunspots or aging spots. I love this one, guys. I think you're going to enjoy it too. So where does sunscreen fall short? A virtual hand raise. How many of you guys put the sunscreen on every day? Do you put it on your face? Do you put it on your whole body? <laughs> so we want to take a look at where sunscreen is falling short. Most experts and the World Health Organization believe that people all over the world are vastly under-applying sunscreen. And on average, proper sunscreen application requires about an ounce per application. And many sunscreen bottles, as we know, are like, what, four to six? Six ounces. So this means that we could be using almost a quarter of our sunscreen per application. <laughs> and most Americans are applying about a quarter of the amount that they should use, which could turn an SPF 40 into an SPF 10.8. <laughs> um, and then those sunscreens, we know they're not going to protect us from the UVA rays, uh, lose their broadband protection within 90 minutes, um, aren't going to filter out blue light. What if we're sweating a lot or swimming? Sometimes there's chemicals in these sunscreens that they themselves can generate free radicals. Ah, so let's just put it into context and talk about how much sunscreen you need to properly use to use it. Think about a family of four at the beach for six hours using a six ounce bottle of sunscreen. You know where I'm going, right? One round of sunscreen application would use two thirds of one bottle. And what if you need to do two to three rounds because you're having a good time out in the sun and the water. You could be using one and a half to two bottles of sunscreen for your trip to the beach for your family of four. Now that's an awful lot of sunscreen. Does that seem a little ridiculous? Yes, it does. But I think it does show us, you know, that there's some gaps here that we can fill in with some awesome nutrients in our diet. So we don't have to rely on just sunscreens. Because as we said in the title, sunscreens where they fall short. <laughs> so you might be saying, oh my gosh, the doom and gloom for 30 minutes. What does this mean to me? What does it mean to me? Well, it means that those UV rays and sunlight are a major cause of accelerated and unnatural skin aging. We know that. It also means that UVA rays are always penetrating always present and penetrate deeper into the skin than the UVB rays. Oh, well, if we didn't know that, we know it now. And sunscreen alone is inadequate for total and long-lasting UV protection. 
Well, if we didn't know that, we surely know it now. <laughs> so that brings us to inside out protection. How the heck can we protect ourselves if sunscreen is inadequate? Well, I know you guys know where I'm going with this already. What did our ancestors do? We were mostly naked, right? Our ancestors, were they protected from UV rays? Do we have natural defenses to protect us against UV rays and free radicals? What do you guys think? Well, if you're saying yes, yes, we do. If you're screaming on the other side of your muted mic, yes, <laughs> you are absolutely correct. We sure do. And what we can learn from our ancestors was that their skin was protected against excess UV rays and free radical formation. But how? <laughs> so now we're going to get into some of our fun nutrients that I mentioned at the very beginning and how they are acting as our very good friends and helping us helping protect our skin as these natural sunscreens that aid us in skin protection. I think it's best explained by looking at our natural defenses in our skin. And of course, our bodies do produce melanin to make us more tan and reduce the risk of getting a burn. But taking a closer look at the skin, this is really exciting, the closer to the surface of the skin we get, which is the part exposed to the UV rays, guess what? The more antioxidants or free radical scavengers can be found. <gasps> and both the dermis and the epidermis have higher levels of antioxidants or free radical scavengers than observed in the hypodermis. Ooh, and the epidermis has the highest level of these guys. Antioxidants can be found in large, antioxidants that can be found in large quantities in our skin include vitamin C, vitamin E, and the family of carotenoids. Hmm. So what do these guys do for our skin? Antioxidants or free radical scavengers are important because they are what quench or destroy free radicals that are created when UV rays hit our skin and interact with the proteins and cell structures. And because of the structure of some of these molecules, some can also block and absorb the sun's rays so they cannot generate those free radicals in the first place. And we'll talk about these in a little bit. And some common antioxidants or free radical scavengers found in the human body are vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, and beta carotene. Guys, did you know that every major antioxidant in the human body can be found in the skin? Well, there must be a reason for this, right? How cool is that? I hope that blows your minds because that blows my mind. And there is a reason for this. These photochemicals absorb UV rays and help support a healthy response to UV light. Unfortunately, these guys, they become used up as they work. A, C, E, all of the different free radical scavengers. They're busy. Antioxidants like C and E, they sacrifice themselves to destroy those free radicals when they give them their electron. Therefore, we actually need to replenish them in our bodies, which is best done through consuming a nutrient-dense diet and through supplements. So exactly, where can we get them? Where can we get these free radical scavengers that are so important for protecting our skin? Well, we can do what our ancestors did. This is what they did for tens of thousands of years, right? They ate vegetables, nuts and seeds and more vegetables and some fruit and some eggs and some fish and some meat. And well, you guessed it, more vegetables. 
Unfortunately, very few of us eat a diet like this, a nutrient dense diet like this today. And even if we did, we might not be getting the same level of nutrients as our ancestors. Why? Well, you guessed it. Plants, they're bred for taste, not nutrient content a lot of the times. And the nutrient content of our foods is declining due to things like monoculture, um, different agricultural methods that deplete our soil and inhibit a plant's natural defense mechanisms. That's really important, right? Because think about if we're eating these colorful fruits and vegetables to get the free radical scavengers or antioxidants from them, these are the plant's natural defense mechanisms to begin with. So when we eat these items, they're also supporting our defense mechanisms as well. But if we have a plant that's not very healthy, um, it's you know been sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, it can't produce the amount of antioxidants that it needs to, and maybe it doesn't even need to because it's getting some of this help from the pesticides and such. So we lose a significant amount, or we can lose a significant amount of of these really important nutrients in our food supply, depending on where our food's coming from. Fortunately, we can use some supplements for um, making up for those gaps in declining soils. And we can also eat naturally raised animals and um, use naturally raised animal products. And then how are we going to use these guys? You know, how are we going to use these antioxidants to support our skin? Well, we did talk about eating them. So yes, we're going to eat them. But we, should we put them on our skin? Maybe we can use them topically as well. And yes, we can actually do both. So topical creams that contain antioxidants, they usually have formulations that help those antioxidants um, absorb into the skin to help protect that skin from the inside out. And we can apply some of these antioxidants to the skin and they're absorbed into the epidermis. So just to be clear, guys, right, the majority of them are not going to block UV rays the way that a sunscreen does. So these are complements for sunscreen when you find topical free radical scavengers to utilize. And research strongly supports the effectiveness of these topicals. However, not all antioxidants can be delivered topically, which is why it's important that we do get them from our diet as well. So what are some of the antioxidants that we can use to support our skin health? Some of my favorites here, one family of free radical scavengers that's super valuable for skin health are the carotenoids. This family of nutrients is what gives many fruits and vegetables their colors, like tomatoes and watermelons and carrots and shrimp and salmon. They all get that pink color from lycopene. And lutein, this is what makes egg yolks yellow. We're going to find lutein in green vegetables as well, like kale, but the chlorophyll is dominating that yellow color. In nature, these act as protective mechanisms for the plant or the animal and provide it with some UV protection. So why would it be any different for us, right? Even more evidence of their importance for protecting our skin is the fact that they preferentially accumulate in the skin and eyes rather than other tissues like the liver and the brain. Our bodies actually shuttle these carotenoids, carotenoids to our skin for a reason. So our skin health all-stars, the reason is, is that they're really effective. They're all-stars in protecting us from UV rays, and they're great at destroying or quenching free radicals. One study published in the Journal of Nutrition showed consuming 16 milligrams of lycopene daily for 10 weeks helped reduce the amount of sunburn in the subject participants by 40%. That's really cool. And... The other great benefit of carotenoids is that they also have some systemic effects as well. Lycopene, for example, can support prostate health, while lutein and zeaxanthin are going to support eye health by filtering out potentially damaging blue light. And how many of you guys have heard of blue light? Speaking of it, this the effects of blue light are, are still kind of understudied, but we're hearing it more and more. Um, 
and it has to do with some changes in our lifestyle as well, because we're exposed to blue light more through all of our digital devices and into the nighttime hours where it can really affect things like our circadian rhythm and our ability to produce things like melatonin. In fact, blue light actually um, creates its very own unique free radical, which is capable of damaging the special machinery in our cells that makes energy known as our mitochondria. Out of the visible light spectrum here, we can see that blue light is really close to UV, right? So this shows us that blue light contains the most energy out of the visible light spectrum. Um, and because it's so close to UV and it vibrates a lot faster than, say, red on the other end, it's more harmful and it can create, as I mentioned, a very unique type of free radical. And our exposure to this blue light, it's on the rise. And we need to protect our not only our eyes, but also our skin from blue light. In fact, when I think of all the blue light that I'm um, exposed to every day, it's, it's kind of scary. I want you guys to think about, too, how much blue light do you think you're exposed to every day through fluorescent lights, LED lights, your smartphones, your tablets, your computers, um, lights that we may not even account for? all sorts of things. But maybe what I should be reaching for are my carotenoid supp supplements instead of my blue light glasses. <laughs> Lutein and zeaxanthin are really especially effective at protecting our eyes from blue light. But all of the carotenoids can protect our skin from blue light through two pathways. So they help filter out some blue light and keep it from damaging our skin. And then the blue light that does reach our skin, um, this creates that unique type of free radical. But our carotenoids that we take in through our diet do have that free radical scavenging capacity to destroy that unique type of free radical. So protective polyphenols, these are going to be another class of great phytonutrients that support skin health and protect us from those UV rays. And these are naturally occurring pigments in plants. Polyphenols support the health of immune cells in the skin and ensure that inflammatory reactions are balanced and appropriate. And some polyphenols can also uh, absorb that UV light, also directly protecting cells from UV damage. Polyphenols can be lost in cooking um, process. So some of, you know, some of that can really help push us towards using a supplement if we're targeting a certain amount type of polyphenol that we want to get in our diet. And let's talk about some of these polyphenols for a minute. You guys may have heard of pycnogenol before. Some of the very strong polyphenols that have been proven beneficial for skin health include an extract from French pine tree known as pycnogenol. Um, there was a very nice study, nicely organized study done at the University of Southern California, which showed that people taking 100 milligrams daily pycnogenol for eight weeks had less sunburn and cellular damage after they were exposed to both the UVA and the UVB rays. One of my favorite protective polyphenols is green tea extract. Drinking about 40 ounces of green tea 60 minutes prior to the UVA ray exposure, about 10 minutes, significantly reduced the DNA damage in cells from study participants in this particular study. This was a 2010 study. Um, now, you may not be interested in drinking 40 ounces of green tea, but you could take about 1.7 grams of green tea extract. Um, this is um, EGCG, also known as EGCG. You're going to find this in green tea. Uh, you can also use the um, matcha green tea powder. And there's numerous animal and human studies showing that green tea polyphenols can be applied topically as well to provide some of that UV um, blocking support. And then a favorite of many, milk thistle extract or silymarin often known for liver support, but this polyphenol found in milk thistle has been shown beneficial as both oral and topically for skin support. Silymarin is great because it has the ability to act both as that UVB filter and blocks those UVB rays, but it's also an important phytonutrient that can support skin health by quenching those free radicals. And whenever we're 
balancing free radicals and oxidative damage, we're also supporting a healthy inflammatory response in the skin. So many polyphenols um, are well absorbed in the skin, so they do work well topically as free radical scavengers, and they can be taken in supplements, or we can get them through foods, so they can act as internal free radical scavengers as well. All right, just a couple more left here for our class today. Vitamin C, the one that everyone's familiar with, right? But I think sometimes can be underutilized a little bit. This is another nutrient that works to support skin health, either as a topical cream or supplement. And when you're looking for products um, for vitamins uh, that contain vitamin C for skin health, you want to make sure that they contain the active form of vitamin C known as ascorbic acid because this is the form that the body can best use. So research shows us that both oral and topical C work to support skin health and destroy those free radicals generated by UV rays. And vitamin C, it has that added bonus when taken orally because it acts as a critical component of collagen, helping us uh, support the creation of new collagen, which is essential for the skin's repair process and maintaining healthy skin. And with vitamin C, it's never too late. Studies show topical ascorbic acid can improve the appearance of wrinkles even after they've formed. So that's really cool. Um, vitamin C has actually also been shown to support the decrease in the severity of those age spots as well. So the change in the pigmentation of the skin. And vitamin E, another really important antioxidant that is acting in this case as a fat soluble antioxidant. So we're getting water, water soluble antioxidant or free radical support from our vitamin C, but then also fat soluble antioxidant support from vitamin E. And these guys, they work together to support the skin. Together, they, we can see a really synergistic effect between the two. Um, when we have enough C and E to lend their free radical scavenging support, i.e. donate their electrons to free radicals, and therefore we need to replenish these guys, right? Because we're going to use them. Well, when we use them together, they can really work to support the um, destruction of the free radicals in the skin. And vitamin C, as I mentioned, functions as a water-soluble antioxidant, while vitamin E works as a fat-soluble one. So they complement each other nicely um, and have been shown to be effective in both oral and topical supplements. And some studies show that taking people taking supplements containing about 1,000 international units of vitamin E and 2,000 milligrams of C for only eight days in this case they increase the amount of time that they could spend in the sun without getting a sunburn from those UVB rays for about 20%. And last up for today is the ever important use of omega-3s in skin health. If you remember our diagram of how skin's damaged from UV rays, you'll recall that free radicals being generated can result in inflammation. And inflammation is also a major cause of accelerated skin aging. And one supplement that's very beneficial in this case is fish oil containing both EPA and DHA, because these fatty acids support balanced levels of inflammation in the skin. And we can't make EPA and DHA, and we don't convert it very well from ALA. So it's essential that we get this from our diet or in supplement form. And studies, studies show that the omega-6 fatty acids, which we find in processed foods and vegetable oils, these can be highly oxidized and very inflammatory in the skin. Therefore, we really do want to work to achieve a proper ratio of two to one or one to one with omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids in our diet to truly support skin health. And one study found that three months of supplementation with EPA and DHA reduced skin damage from UV rays in patients who were hypersensitive to UV damage. Wow. <laughs> so you guys, I'm just going to flip us to the next slide. At this point, what I want to do 
is take a minute to talk about what we'll discuss next time and then summarize what we talked about today. Uh, Morgan, maybe before that, you can address, mm -hmm. we have a one question. And sure. the question is, uh, what do you think about HelioCare? It's a fern block. I guess it's a sunblock, <clears throat> some Ooh. kind of the cream. Could you say what it is again? It's called HelioCare. Oh, like Helioplex? Uh, care, as C-A-R-E. That's not the familiar. question from the participant. Neither am I. <clears throat> okay. Um, I've heard of Helioplex. I know it's a sunscreen that my aunt uses that indicates a, a broad spectrum UVA, UVA broad spectrum. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's going to be similar in that sense. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, that's the only question that we had uh, from the participants right now. And because it's a close to an hour, maybe we should just... Um, kind of see if anybody else has a question that they can join and then maybe you can cover what, what is coming to the next class. Absolutely. So we're opening for the Q&A. If you have a question for Morgan, please um, unmute yourself and, and ask the question. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. There was a lot of information there. I know this is a, this is a dense class and I'm yeah, so glad we're doing it in two parts. Correct. <laughs> Hi, this is Julie. I asked the question about the HelioCare. It's a product that you take internally, oh. and it was recommended by a dermatologist. Its main component is fern block, and it's supposed to help you not absorb as much UVA. Oh, how interesting. I'd have to look into that. I'd be happy to look into that for our next class. And so, fern block, so some trademarked elements that's. Um, We'll I think see. that's not f trademarked. The, oh, what's not trademarked, trademarked is HelioCare. HelioCare, okay. Yeah. I, Thank you, Julie. I'm really interested. I'd be interested to see what their uh, technology is behind that, and I'll be happy to do a little research. Anybody else? We have a question. Mm hmm Uh, the, there's a question, comfortable uh, sharing notes on the recording. I missed some of the info. Yes, we will put, place the um, presentation in, and maybe Christina can address that, uh, place in our uh, Mighty Networks or in our online um, tool. So if you want to join uh, bowmanwellness.co, presentation will be uh, posted there for sure. That's where you can find all of the information. You can um, ask the questions and, and uh, stuff like that. So that will be, uh, and the recording will be sent to all of the participants as well. Yeah, that's great. Great. Hi, Morgan. So, um, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Quick question. So our family um, lives in Iowa and um, we're going to be going to Hawaii this summer. Mm -hmm. June, actually. So we'll be coming right out of the winter months, not enough time to really um, condition our skin for that, um, that strong sun while we're there. Do you have a suggestion on what we can start taking right now to prepare our skin for that? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, never too late, absolutely, to start increasing the amount of these nutrients that you get through your diet and through supplements. So, okay. you know, these were some really great supplements that we talked out about today that have some awesome research behind them. Next time we will talk about um, how you can get these nutrients through your diet as well. So to answer your question, um, as probably as succinctly as I could think of, would be to um, focus on if you would be interested in a supplement containing lutein, lycopene, zeaxanthin, some of those major players that you're going to find in your eye health supplements um, that'll contain some of the different carotenoids. And I can actually show you because I grabbed some of the ones from our talk today. Um, this one wasn't in the presentation, but this is Gero Formulas Macula PF. And what's great about this one is it contains lutein, a fair amount, 20 milligrams, zeaxanthin, 
um, mesozeaxanthin, which is a lot harder to find from our plant and animal diet, more from some marine, and it's a little bit um, still kind of hard to nail down exactly what we get that from. Uh, so it's nice to have that in here. And then the RR zeaxanthin as well, and then astaxanthin. So that's a really nice um, complex of carotenoids to support skin health. And since we're going to find, as I mentioned earlier, these guys preferentially accumulating in the skin, um, this is going to offer some of that uh, support ahead of the game before June comes around. Now you could also go ahead and add in, you know, a green tea, for example, EGCG, or just start using that daily as well in uh, tea form. And then it was just not in the macula PF, but because lycopene is a um, a very important carotenoid that we see accumulating preferentially in the skin as well. So lycopene would be another good one. And we'll talk about those, you know, foods as well more next time that we can find all of these nutrients in. Um, but tomatoes and watermelon, for example, um, they're going to contain some lycopene and it's that pink color that the lycopene is lending to those guys that provide us with some of that protection. Yeah, and, and I um, think for the person who is going to Hawaii, <clears throat> don't waste your money buying uh, sunscreen in on the continental US because Hawaii has a strict rules of about the ingredients that they are in the sunscreen since the ingredients that are sold in the United States quite often uh, kill the uh, reef. And they yeah. right now have a special formulation to allow to not allow the certain um, certain content in it that it's known that it kills the reef. So naturally, yeah. so buy, so buy the sunscreen over there. That's a very good point. All natural <clears throat> grocery stores um, only offer sunscreens that will are reef protective. So we've actually no longer allow sunscreens for quite some time now that contain those mm -hmm. ingredients. Um, and we do have a customer literature file on sunscreen safety as well that talks about that. So that's really neat. There's a very interesting question for you, Morgan. It uh -huh. says, and, and uh, it's a, a kind of tricky to answer. Are there any resources to find out the actual content of the vitamin in our food nowadays? I apologize for everybody. We are running a little bit out uh, over time, over four minutes. So if you can stay, please stay with us. Um, we will have another class on this. If not, we do understand and uh, you know that, that you cherish your time. So thank you very much for coming. Yes, but that you. will be interesting. Also Oh, sorry, just one quick announcement too, for anyone that does need to hop off. I do want to just say I'm putting in the chat the link to our future Lunch and Learns. So feel free to browse the schedule for spring and we hope to see you back at uh, future Lunch and Learns as well. And each um, uh, date has its own registration link so that you can uh, get registered. Um, and just wanted to thank everyone so much for coming and thank you, Morgan, for all of this incredible information. And, and we'll let you um, finish out with this last question. Thanks so much. Absolutely. So yeah, that's a great question. Actually, after next class, um, uh, we'll have for you guys six smoothies for healthy skin that you can also utilize to get some of these nice nutrients, as well as the ultimate guide to healthy skin to kind of put it all together for you. Um, but I would I'd be happy to include in that carotenoids as well. Um, this one does give you some microgram content of different foods. And just to give you an idea, a one cup of cooked kale will give you approximately 20 milligrams of lutein. Um, so there is there are ref, there are resources out there to estimate how many of these nutrients, how much of these nutrients you're getting from foods. Of course, organic is going to provide you with more. So I would always look out for that. Um, but I'd be happy to provide you with that information as well um, at the close of next class so that you have some tools in your tool belt to estimate what you're getting from foods. Yeah. And, and you know, for today's class, we, we learned about UV rays and how they damage the skin and how that's a major part of our skin damage. And we talked about some of those internal solutions and, um, you know, how we can protect ourselves from the inside out with antioxidants like ACE and phytonutrients, polyphenols, lycopene, lutein, EGCG, silymarin, and more. And I'm really excited to be able to share with you guys next time, you know, why grease 
for example, up here on this slide, has some of the lowest rates of skin cancer despite high solar radiation. So think about that for next time. Uh, what is it that they're eating in their diet? Are they getting lots of healthy fats? Are they getting lots of carotenoids from their green and colorful vegetables? And thank you everybody for who came today. Um, I hope that the information was useful to you. I know it's it's jam packed with good stuff. It is, and information was a preparation for the class that it's coming, which we will be giving a tangible and the practical advices on the diet. And of course, you're mentioning the recipes. That's great. So this was like a foundation for the second class. Yeah, yeah, it provides an idea of some of those nutrients. And if you like want to run out and get a supplement today or get a pound of kale, <laughs> you got someplace to start. <laughs> this is in, in, uh, question for um, Darnica. It's, it's still, you're right on target. She's saying, I actually meant that if the soil is depleted, then the published data on vitamin mineral is, is uh, not accurate. There is a... Um, mm there is a definitely truth to that. So mm -hmm. at this point in time, mm -hmm. we are doing, uh, the whole industry is good, doing the best that it can, but I'm sure uh, for the future study, they will have to take in account the, the richness of the soil that that food is grown in. So Absolutely. you're right on there. That is a very um, a key uh, yeah. for the future. Absolutely. That'll be a big reason why choosing organic will at least help um, help increase those nutrient contents, especially of right. those free radical scavengers, the antioxidants that are those plants' natural defense mechanisms to begin with. Um, and then I like to have a little rule of thumb. Sometimes I'll just shave 20 to 30% off the top uh, for myself so that I say, okay, and so it says I'm getting 20 milligrams, I'll take a third off of that and say maybe I'm getting XYZ amount. <laughs> nice assurance policy. That's a good And one. then <laughs> exactly. And then our supplements are nice little assurance policies, so to speak. They help fill in the gaps, those nutritional gaps where we can't always account for the depletion of the soil or the apple that tastes like a donut. <laughs> <laughs> good. Anybody else has a question? And we will wrap up the call just to stay on time. Thank you very much. This was very yeah. informative yes. presentation. Thank you so much, Morgan. Mm -hmm. My pleasure, you guys. I had a thanks lot of fun. Everybody so I hope for that coming. Else did. <laughs> and All right. Thanks, everyone. See, thank, expect to see you for the second part because that's where the fun will begin. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to dive into diet and blood sugar. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell you guys what to expect for next time. That's terrible of me. Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk. <laughs> well, they can we already it, know. Yeah, they, they can check information on the website. So just to keep everybody on time. Absolutely. Um, so they can go ahead, please, and check the information on our website on the second class and the content of the second class. Thank you.